the connection between the IDF, the Israel Startup Nation, and Israeli science? The answer? Israeli culture of innovation. Do you want to understand this culture? Do you want to appreciate the values that drive innovation in Israel? And do you want to understand innovation in Israeli science? If so, stay with me. On the eve of his inauguration as Chief of Staff, Colonel Aviv Kohavi spoke at the graduation ceremony of the officers' course. The risks are mounting like never before, he said. Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran. To counter those risks, he said, one needs an innovative and creative mind. You need a special approach, one that prioritizes innovative and creative performance. For Kohavi, innovation is key for the survival of Israel. Prayers are nice, one could infer, but innovation is a necessity in the military, in startups, in science too. Were we to ask the CEO of a high-tech company to talk about his priorities, he would have said similar stuff. If we asked high school principals to talk about their educational priorities, they would have also talked about those themes. And were we to ask the president of the National Academy of Sciences to address us, we would also expect to find her with similar narratives. We would expect so because this is a very Israeli narrative, following the biblical article, replace the old with the new. Israeli culture always seeks the new, always seeks advan advancement, as innovation is crucial for survival. This is why we aspire to find something new rather than corroborate what is already known. This is why we look for students who bring something new. Those orientations spring from Israeli culture. First things first, let me simply state that innovation is a cultural product. Compared with Germany, Israel has a clear preference for innovation. Germany prioritizes order, accuracy, and rigor. In Israel, we prioritize creativity and innovation. This came up quite consistently in conversation with 125 Israeli scientists working with German colleagues, even in the historical sciences. An Egyptologist, for example, stated that, quote, I value creativity and innovation most, so it's no wonder my students are very creative and innovative. A political scientist explained that in Germany it is based on networking and reciprocation. Science is not fully open there. In Israel science is way more open. The system is more open than in Germany. And that means that innovation can come out more easily. He explained that in Germany students follow their professors. Woo. It affects the conformity of science, you know, who he quotes and in what directions he goes. Now, if the professor is dynamic and pushes the frontiers, that's fine. But sometimes the professor brings the money and then the students have to follow his lead. In Israel, at the moment you become a lecturer, at the moment you enter a department, you don't owe anyone anything. I came to the university, I didn't owe anyone anything. A very senior researcher sitting on major European research committees stressed the need for innovation. The main criterion for assessing research proposals, he said, is innovation. Your first question is what you want to know. What is the contribution of this research to knowledge and where it fits in the world and what is new about that? Israel is care less about technical aspects of research, almost careless. Technical aspects take a big back seat. Indeed, compared with German or American scientists, Israeli academics are less strict or detailed in describing the research methods. We care more for innovation. The major sign of success is having new ideas. The cultural preference for innovation makes for very unique scientific preferences. Israeli scholars seek to find, seek to find new texts rather than repeating analysis of the same text over and over. An historian said, I expect my students to do the same. I educate my students, saying that if someone has already written it, don't reinvent it. Make something new. Another humanities researcher found it difficult to describe the differences between Israel and Germany, but agreed. As she said, the system in Germany doesn't encourage openness or daring. 
there are good technical capacities there, but not people, namely no pepper, meaning not really innovating. Again, this is a sweeping generalization. The evidence is clear. Germany and innovation, difficult. Israel and innovation, easier. The preference for innovation in Israel prioritizes creativity over rigor. In Israeli science, as in the Israeli army, as, and in Israeli startups, we prefer innovation. We prefer creativity. According to a cancer researcher, innovation is certainly the charter of his lab. As he said, we are looking for all kinds of new approaches, other ways of doing stuff, all kinds of ideas that are innovative. We do not hide the fact that we are a center of innovation. Another cancer researcher agreed, the edge of Israeli science is innovation. What makes it possible to hold on to intensifying competition vis-a-vis -vis countries that invest much more in science is the spirit of Israeli innovation. As he said, we sometimes try to compensate for lack of resources by collaborations that allow us to use advanced technologies. But what really helps us is innovation, the tendency to take an initiative and the talents here. As interviewees explained, Israeli students are constantly on the offensive, offensively opening up new directions. They too seek to go ahead, to see something new, to try and test what steps can be taken ahead. They do not want a small improvement of existing findings. They want to change, just like the Colonel Kochavi pleaded his officers, just as we expect our PhD students to do. It is a cultural thing. New stuff, new data, new technologies, the new seduce the Israelis. Even if we have a binding work plan, such as approved research proposal, we will nevertheless change course as we face new developments. Initial findings will prompt us to reconsider and research. We do not get stuck and we do not bang our heads against the wall. Israeli scientists know that commitments to research proposals that were approved a year ago are secondary. They rather prefer going for new and interesting results. According to a neurobiologist, a new finding always makes him change course. I could seduce my doctoral students with curiosity or follow up on results that would be more interesting if we change direction. Because you know, in scientific studies, especially in the field of experimental science, we can see and find something new every day. And if you suddenly find something you didn't think of, something that changes the way you think and prompts you to think differently, you immediately turn direction for, the something, for something new. Obviously, science has no ironclad frameworks. There have been instances, and I have that style, if I see something new, it turns me on, and I'm going there. As a brain researcher said, the Israeli advantage really lies in brain power, not in muscle power, in original thinking, not in technology. Some have noted that Israeli science doesn't have many technological inventions. We prefer good ideas, he explained, over technological capabilities. We are good at thinking best in offering new things to do of existing resources and pre-existing frameworks. I asked someone how he orients himself in his experimental field. He said he has to innovate as it is an existential thing. If I invent something new now, that I, I published it. Then within two years the Germans come in with the equipment they have in Germany and then I have no chance. So I'm constantly looking for how to turn right and left. I move from today's knowledge as they have the technologies to do it. So I'm looking for the place I can do or say something new because I don't have the equipment. Something new. So yes, innovation in Israel sometimes develops due to budgetary constraints and technological scarcity. People feel like mice in a rail. They are constantly thinking. They entertain a kind of intellectual agitation. They keep thinking how, without the technologies of Harvard or the Max Planck, they can compete. How do we survive here for the next 40 years? So yes, there is some intellectual unrest in Israel. We constantly look for something new, seeking new opportunities along the way. Even when you read a paper on a different topic, you keep thinking, what would I do? What else can be 
done in that situation. So like Major General Aviv Kohavi advocated, Israeli science with emphasis on Israeli science too favors innovation. It's a general cultural code in Israel. It is a cultural value that directs action. Some cultures produce minds that seek to relax in the known. Other cultures create minds that seek to move forward. The Israeli mind wants to move forward into the new. Until next week, I am Professor Gad Yair. Thank you.